today on Hot Thai Kitchen, we are making black sticky rice pudding. Sadika, welcome to the first Canadian episode of Hot Thai Kitchen. Yes, I have moved to Vancouver, Canada. That's where we are today. Now, on Hot Thai Kitchen Facebook, I've got a couple of requests for dessert and also a request to make something with black rice. So, best of both worlds, today we're making black sticky rice pudding or in Thai, kangyo dampia. As per usual, here's your Thai lesson. Kao means rice, nyo means sticky, dam means black, and pia means wet. So it literally translates to wet black sticky rice or black sticky rice pudding. So let's get going. First thing we're going to look at is rice. So I've got in this pot half a cup of black sticky rice, and I'll talk about the rices in a second, so hang in there, as well as two tablespoons of white sticky rice. And I soaked this overnight. Um, you can soak it at least three hours would be sufficient, or if you don't have time or forgot to soak it, that's fine. It'll just take a little bit longer to cook, that's all. So I'm going to drain off the water that I soaked it in and add two cups of fresh water. When you cook, always start with um, cold water because hot water sometimes gets funny flavors from all the pipe that it sits in. So we're going to set this onto the stove and let it cook. Okay, so I'm just going to let that go and not worry about it until it comes to a boil. And now, in addition to that, I'm also going to add pandan leaves. Now, the whole leaf, this is just a chunk of it, the whole leaf is like three, three times this long. And this is the equivalent of vanilla in Thai dessert. So it basically infuses this floral, coconutty aroma into our dessert. It's optional. If you don't, can't find it, that's not a problem at all. Uh, but if you can, it adds a nice touch. So I'm going to tie this into a knot. And it does two things. It bruises the leaf, so it allows the juices to come out a little bit more. I'm drop that in the pot. Um, and it also makes it shorter, which makes it less awkward, because sometimes if it's long, it's kind of sticking out everywhere in the pot. So I'll drop that in there and let it infuse with the rice. Now, black rice and white rice. Here's what we've got. This is black sticky rice, and as you can see, it's black, but it's also got streaks of brown in it. Black rice is whole grain rice, and by whole grain, let's take a look at what that means. So here's the anatomy of a rice grain. Any rice is going to look kind of like this. So on the outside is the husk, and the husk is, is the outer shell that, that you know we never see at the store, because they take that out. Next layer is the bran. The bran is the outer layer that's left on brown rice. That's also the case for our black sticky rice. The bran is left on the grain. Now the endosperm is the starchy section, or that's what white rice is, it's just the endosperm. And the germ is basically the embryo of the rice. So the black rice has the bran, has the germ, and the endosperm. The white sticky rice, on the other hand, which is this guy, it's um, more opaque and a little bit shorter than jasmine rice. And this guy only has the endosperm left. And when the finished product, you're not really going to see the white rice anymore. There's only, uh, the ratio is four to one. Um, the reason why I add it is because to add a little bit of a, of a starchiness of the thick at body, pretty much body and stickiness to the pudding. Because the black rice is a whole grain rice, the starch inside doesn't come out of the grain quite easily. It's, a, it's encapsulated inside. so. The pudding isn't as sticky. When you add white rice in there, it makes the, the pudding thicken up more readily. Okay. So while our rice is coming to a boil, we're going to prep the other ingredients that go into the rice pudding. So, very popular ingredient is taro in the rice pudding. Taro comes in a couple of varieties. A big guy like this looks kind of like an alien egg, or little ones like that. You can use either one. I prefer the big ones because it's a little starchier, so the, it's a little creamier 
as a result. Same way as large russet potato is creamier and fluffier than the small red new potatoes. So, but either one works and you don't even have to put it in if you can't find it. So the way to prep this guy is I'm going to peel it and you just peel it like you do a potato. So we're, we've got our taro. So if you want to take a look closely, it's kind of this white with the purple fleck all throughout. The little ones don't have the flecks. The little ones have a one color. So I'm going to transfer this over to our pot over on the stove. So, um, taro, cooked taro or potato, starchy root vegetables, always start cooking in cold water. The reason why we want to cook it in cold water is because the gradual heat increase will actually cook it from the inside out more evenly as opposed to dropping it in boiling hot water which will cook the outside really fast and the inside will take longer. So it's just a nice more gradual cooking time. So we'll let that go. A little bit of salt to flavor the taro. We're not trying to make it salty but we're trying to bring out the natural flavor natural flavor of the taro. The same reason why you want to salt your pasta. Not to make the pasta salty when you're cooking in water I mean, but to bring out the natural flavor of the wheat in the pasta. So we'll let that go for five to ten minutes until it's tender enough to put a fork through and then we'll stir it into the pudding at the end. The next ingredient we're going to add to our rice pudding is young coconut meat. Now this is the stuff that lines the inside the cavity of the, the young coconut. This stuff came from a can, but if you happen to have a young coconut sitting around, you can scrape the inside of that off as well. I'm going to cut it into like one inch by a quarter inch strip just so it fits onto the spoon nicely. Let's see. And this is optional as well. I think it's delicious. It's velvety. It adds a nice texture to the uh, texture variety to the pudding. But if you can't find it or you don't want to, you don't have to add it. Completely optional. Um, we'll stir this in at the end when the rice pudding is done. Another ingredient that works really well is sweet corn. Sweet corn kernels add a nice texture to it as well and the flavors go together really well. Now we're making a coconut sauce that goes on top of the dessert. So we are adding to this pan half a cup of coconut milk. Okay, we'll let that sit in there. And then we're going to add a thickening agent. In this case, I have a teaspoon of rice flour in here. You can use cornstarch or you can use all-purpose flour if you want. If you use rice or cornstarch, it'll actually make it a gluten-free dessert, which is a nice touch. Just a little bit of water, just enough to dissolve it. And you never want to add dry starch to hot liquid because it'll clump up into lumps and you'll never get it out. And it'll be a nightmare. Um, that kind of stuff you do once and you remember forever not to do it again, which is what happened to me. So that's why I want to uh, dissolve this in water until there's no more clumps. And then you want to add it, and if your liquid, your coconut milk is already hot, make sure you add it stirring. And at this point you want to keep stirring because you want to make sure that it thickens uniformly rather than having clumps because the starch tends to settle at the bottom. A quarter teaspoon of salt. So this is a salted coconut sauce and Thai dessert always plays on the salty and sweet combination. The, the rice pudding is sweet and the coconut is salty. So together it makes a perfect combination. So we want to cook this until it boils because as soon as it boils you know that the starch has reached its full thickening power. So once I see the boil... Okay, that's it. That's done. Super quick. So the rice has been cooking for 15-20 minutes or so. And you want to make sure once it starts to thicken up to stir it frequently with a rubber spatula because once the starch starts to come out, 
it'll tend to stick on the bottom. So you want to be stirring it and making sure it doesn't stick. And if you notice that it's dry and it hasn't finished cooking yet, um, you can add a little bit of water, kind of like risotto. When you're making a risotto, same thing, you stir and then you add more water as needed, making sure you don't add too much water because we don't want our runny pudding at the end. So we'll come and check on that in a few minutes. So our rice is done. Now the way you know it's done is taste it, obviously. But what you're tasting for is that the rice is soft. But because brown rice is whole grain, it'll always be a little bit chewy. So don't mistake that chewiness for, not, for it not being done. Um, just make sure there's no more crunchiness. And when you eat it, it has a nice mouthfeel to it. So at this point, we're going to take out our pandan leaves. Thank you very much. You've done a great job. And then we're going to add our other ingredients, our coconut meat, and about a heaping quarter cup of the taro that we just cooked. Stir that. Seasoning. I've got half a cup of chopped palm sugar right here. You can use regular white sugar if you want, but I like the butterscotchy flavor that this adds to our dessert. So that goes in half a cup and about a quarter teaspoon plus an eighth of a teaspoon, so a quarter teaspoon and a half of that, of salt, table salt, and we're going to stir that until the sugar is melted. And this is the consistency we're looking for, thick and luscious. And it's not entirely black, it's actually a little bit more purple than it is black. So the sugar is all melted, and now we are ready to plate. I'm going to bring it up over here. Now, something that looks like this is kind of hard to make pretty, because most people who have never had it usually look at it and go, oh, what is that? But it tastes delicious. What do I want? The spoon. Okay, so the trick to making something that doesn't look pretty in and of itself look better is to use a receptacle that's pretty. So for a party, something like this would be really cute. Or if it's a cocktail party, you know, where they have lots of different things, like a buffet table, a little shot glass is really cute as well. So let's see. Let's plate this up. Let's hope it doesn't drip. Mm, and it's great. It's a great dish for winter. And it's actually going to be Christmas in one week. So this will be a great hearty warm dessert for you to bring to your Christmas party. And so let's dish a little one as well. This is going to be a little tricky to not get on the side. Look how cute that is. Okay, there's our sauce, the coconut sauce that we just made. This is the kind of consistency we want. A little bit on top, like a little snow cap. And for garnish, today I'm going to use some sweet corn kernels. As I said, sometimes we add this inside the pudding ourselves, but I think it makes a super cute garnish for something like this. And I believe in edible garnish, so I don't want to stick a mint leaf in it or anything. I mean, you can't really... Everybody pulls out the mint leaf. And that's pretty much done. There you go. It's our black sticky rice pudding, or kanyo dampiak. Thanks for watching Hot Thai Kitchen. And remember, I have a lot of other recipes on my channel, so please visit my channel. And if you like the show, subscribe so you never miss an episode. And I will see you next time.